<laughs> All right, YouTube. Um, I spend a lot of time watching a lot of the car audio videos on here and reading all the comments. And I figured I'd do a public service and take care of a couple common car audio rumors that you hear. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about capacitors. And what these are, they're um, little power sources that you, you hook up and they're supposed to, like, baby and amplifier and stuff. Um, most common type of comment I see on YouTube is, well, you're running a lot of power, your lights are dimming, my headlights are dimming when the bass hits, I need to get a capacitor. If your headlights are dimming, your bass hits, a capacitor is not going to help your problem. It, in fact, can actually make it worse. Because the problem, the reason the lights are dimming is because your amplifier is demanding too much power for the car's electrical system to hold, to um, give it. It can't power the lights adequately and the amp adequately at the same time, so it takes away from the lights to power the amp. Um, a capacitor is something that is charged by the battery, which is charged by the alternator. We'll get to that in a second. And a capacitor can discharge its power very quickly to an amplifier. A capacitor is actually, in a sense, a better way to power an amplifier than a battery because it can discharge its power to the amplifier more quickly. But the capacitor needs to be charged by the battery, which in turn needs to be charged by the alternator. If your lights are dimming, the problem is with your power supply from your alternator. So adding another component to the electrical system, i.e. the capacitor, you're just making your problem worse. Because now your alternator's not only charging the battery, it's also charging the battery, which in turn has to charge the capacitor, which then turn powers the amplifier. Um, the easiest way to get rid of light dimming is something called the Big 3 upgrade, and this is upgrading the power wires under your hood. Um, upgrading your battery's ground wire usually to a thicker gauge, either 4 gauge or 8 gauge if you're running a lot of power, your, um, your battery to your engine block, and then your engine block to your chassis, your vehicle. And um, doing these, this upgrade, and also the alternator to the battery cable as well, I forgot to mention that, Upgrading these wires will increase your current flow. There are a lot of websites that talk about this upgrade. Some people recommend fusing the wire. Um, you don't have to fuse it. It could be a good idea. But it's a great way to upgrade because the wires under your hood are not meant for a heavy-duty, high-powered car audio install. They're meant to power things like your air conditioner, your stock radio, and your headlights. They're not meant to power a 2,000-watt base amp. So upgrading the wires underneath your hood will do a uh, will help it a lot, okay? Um, if you're running more than 1500 watts continuous of power, you really need to consider buying a high output alternator, usually 200 amps or more, depending on how much power you're running. If you're running more power, 300 amp alternators, some people will even run multiple alternators when the power gets excessive, like 10,000 watts or something insane like that. Um, another good thing is to buy high a good quality battery. Kinetic makes good batteries. Um, Optima deep cycles are also very popular. And uh, they last a lot longer. They can handle being charged to recharge more times than, say, your standard um, you know, Everlast battery can. Um, doing those two upgrades to an audio system will really... Your lights aren't going to dim anymore. Unless you're running over 5,000 watts continuous, a good alternator and a good battery and good cables, you don't need a capacitor. And um, also, I like to address the rumor of the second battery in the trunk. Again, if your lights are dimming, adding another battery, another capacitor, any extra component is just going to make your problem worse because the problem is with your alternator not having the ability to power all the electrical components in the car. If your lights are dimming like crazy, you do one of two things. You live with it, get a smaller base amp, or you upgrade your wires. Start by upgrading your wires if that doesn't help, then consider getting a high output alternator. But usually, upgrading the wires will help your current flow a lot. <laughs> now I'm going to talk about some other stuff. Just because you haven't heard of the brand doesn't mean it's not good. A lot of people out there, a lot of people who are basically giving fellatio to companies like JL Audio, Rockford Fosgate, MTX, Kicker, and stuff because they see their name everywhere. Now don't get me wrong, these companies make good products, but you can find products that will be every bit as good, if not better, than your you know, kicker, your Rockford, your JL. For example, I'll take something called Phi Audio. A lot of people know about it, a lot of people don't. 
a lot of people who just get in the car and have never heard of Fi Audio, okay? I walked into Audio Express about a month ago, so have you ever heard of Fi Audio? No. Must not be very good. Well, let me tell you something. The Fi Audio BTL series, their SPL woofer, will outbeat pretty much anything that MTX makes, anything the Kicker makes, except for the Solo X, and will blow a W7 out of the water. Now, granted, a W7 is more of an SQL sub, it sounds good, also gets along. BTL is more of an SPL sub. This here, this is the motor structure from a, from a 5BL, which is their SQL line. Um, it can handle over a thousand watts continuous. Of course, I managed to blow mine, so it needs to be reconed, don't ask. But that said, the woofer will get extremely loud and will take a lot of power if not abused. Shut up. Um, another company that a lot of people haven't heard of that's also very good is something called Audio Q. Let's spell audio, then Q U E. Very good company, good quality amps for a great price. And they're a great price for one reason because not a lot of people know about them. Kicker makes good stuff, but they cost more because you're buying a Kicker product, okay? So just because you're not, you don't have two Kicker L7s in your trunk doesn't mean that you're not going to bang louder than your buddies, okay? If, if you get a setup with two 18 inch Phi Audio BLs, any Phi Audio product, you will hit numbers on the SPL meter close, if not better, than you would with a, a kicker product and stuff. So just because it's name brand, you've heard of it, doesn't mean it's great. Now granted, there are some terrible, stupid brands like Pile and you know, Pyramid and Jensen. They just they're very cheap. If it's if it's if you think you're getting a 10,000 watt amp for a hundred dollars, you're getting ripped off, okay? If it's too good to be true, it probably is. Another good product is um is is Cadence Audio. Now some of their higher end stuff is pretty expensive. Their website has an outlet store. Their amps are a fantastic price. Stop buying other stuff. Just go there and buy their amps. So just because it's a lesson two, just because it's name brand doesn't just because it isn't name brand doesn't mean it's good. Do your research. Um Thirdly, if you're on YouTube writing comments on other people's systems and you don't know shit, shut your pie hole. I really get tired of hearing it. Reading through the comments and Johnny Dumbass is going to write a whole essay on cardio and talk shit the entire time. Um, one last thing is Dynamat is good stuff. But don't go freaking crazy with it. Let's talk about a um, sound deadener in general. There's two kinds. There's your asphalt-based deadener, it's your baseline dynamat, and then there's your butyl-based deadener. A website called um, SoundDeadenerShowdown.com. Guy reviews many different types of deadener. My favorite type of deadener is a called Dampifier from the Second Skin Company, and it's in my opinion better than Dynamat Extreme. Very similar to it. Um, it's just clear silver and doesn't have the Dynamat logo written all over it. Well, but I made the mistake when I put um, Deadner in my trunk to do the entire frigging trunk, and it cost a lot. And here's what happened: is I had already done the lid of my trunk and uh, the sides and the rear deck, and I thought, well, hey, if I do the entire trunk, it'll make it sound a lot better. It didn't for one reason. The metal on the bottom of your trunk, normally in a car, is a lot more rigid and stiff than the metal on the sides or the rear deck or the, the lid, and therefore less prone to rattles. When you deaden, buy a reasonable amount of deadener. Play the woofer in there with no deadener, deaden the lid, things that you know rattle, and then play it again. But don't go crazy with the deadener, because that stuff does cost a lot, and you can waste a lot of money on unnecessary deadener. Uh, thirdly, do your research before you go to an... Um, my last piece of advice, do your research before you go to buy any car or any product because a lot of these shops, the guys there are knowledgeable but they work on a commission. They will sell you bullshit products just to make a commission check because, hey, they got to pay the bills too. So if you want to message me or even email me and ask me about, you know, car or advice, what you think is a good thing to buy or, you know, what I'd recommend, go ahead. I am not a a complete expert on car audio, but I know enough not to get ripped off. Um, I also recommend checking out www.caraudioforum.com. There are guys on there who know a lot more than me about car audio. Post in the threads there. And just before you spend a grand on a system, learn about it, because you can get a lot more than you think for the amount of money you want to spend.